Hydraulic vertical shores are used by contractors and utilities on job sites every day. Uh, these shores help these contractors and utilities uh, be productive, save time and money, work safely. Uh, the shores come in many different sizes. They don't weigh a lot. They're easy to install and remove. Uh, they work particularly well uh, when we've got crossing utilities or other objects in the trench that make it difficult to either slope uh, the trench or to use maybe a trench shield. Uh, this particular shore has a three and a half foot rail. Uh, you'll see shores with rails as short as a foot or a foot and a half or as long as 12 or 15 feet in length. Uh, this particular shore has two cylinders. Cylinders have a stroke of 22 to 36 inches. Sometimes you'll just see one cylinder. Sometimes you'll see three or four cylinders. Uh, the strokes also vary. The length of the rail and the stroke of the cylinder will be determined by the depth and width of the trench. Uh, hydraulic vertical shores are designed to fold for easy installation. Uh, that's going to create those some uh, pinch points. And we want to be very careful when we're handling the shore that our fingers are to the outside of the rail and away from those cylinder pivot points. We're going to connect the pump can hose to the quick coupler connector. We're then going to use our release tool and slip it under the handle and grab the handle. Most of your manufacturers are going to say that you need to put 750 to 1500 pounds per square inch of pressure in the cylinder. So most of your manufacturers are going to have a green arc on their pump can, which is going to represent that 750 to 1500 PSI range. We want to build the pressure. As we build the pressure, uh, the cylinder is going to expand. Uh, we want to get that needle up into that proper range. Once we get up in the green range, we want to pause for just a minute to make certain that the cylinder is going to hold the pressure. Uh, when we've got sufficient pressure in the cylinders, uh, we're going to rotate our release tool 180 degrees and we're going to use that release tool to disconnect the quick coupling. We don't want to let somebody in the trench until we build that pressure and we're certain we can maintain that pressure and all the shores are in place in the trench. In a few instances it's going to be necessary to use three-quarter inch Finland form or fin form behind the rails. Uh, the objective of the fin form or finland form uh, is to control any raveling or sloughing in the face of the trench. Uh, in certain instances, use of the fin form is going to be optional per the competent person. In a few instances, it will be required. We've just got to check the OSHA charts or the manufacturer's tabulated data to determine when it's going to be required. When we're going to remove the shore, we're going to use both our release tool and our removal hook. So we're going to take our removal hook and we're going to grab the bottom rail and then we're going to use our release tool to release pressure in the shore. A little bit of biodegradable fluid going to flow into the trench. We're then going to walk the shore out of the trench.
This training video is made possible by the generous support of Baker Corp, DP Nikolai, Efficiency Production, National Trench Safety, Pacific Shoring, Speed Shore, Trench Plate Rental, Trench Shore Rentals and Tree Bore Shoring Rentals, Trench Shoring Company, Trinity Industries, Underground Safety Equipment, and United Rentals.